Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at pretty much the best power bank I've ever had and this comes from Voxlink. Now this is a 9000 milliamp hour power bank. You can see on the front here we have a little display that shows you how much battery capacity is left. Now it's very low at the moment and I've run it down on purpose. It's got two USBs for output and it's got a micro USB charging input and of course the button here that turns it on or lets you check the battery status. Now when you first look at this you might think it's kind of big for 9000 milliamp hour. It's not huge, but it's a little bit bigger than competing products. For instance, here I have the Asus Zen Power, which is 10,050 milliamp hour. And you put them side by side, you can see that the box link is quite a bit bigger. And although it's maybe a little bit slimmer, it's not that much different. So why is it bigger? And why would I want to carry this one around instead of this Asus one? So let's start with one of the biggest features of this. Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0. Now if you haven't heard of what this is, it's very exciting. Basically it lets you charge things much faster than you used to be able to. Now a lot of power banks have Quick Charge, but they only have it for the output. So for instance when you're charging your phone it will charge faster, but you can't charge the power bank fast. Whereas this one supports Quick Charge for the input and the output. So I can actually charge this power bank a lot faster than I can charge this one here for example. So here you can see the different inputs and outputs. Now one thing you'll notice is that Quick Charge uses higher voltages and that's how they get the higher amount of power to charge these things faster. So you can see it can do regular 5 volts 2.4 amp which is regular USB but it can also go up to say 9 volts at 2 amp or 12 volts at 1.5 amp. So you can get an input of up to 18 watts and it's the same on the output. If your um, cell phone or your tablet or whatever else you're charging supports Qualcomm Quick Charge you're going to get those higher charge rates and that means you're going to be able to use this thing much faster. Instead of waiting say 7 or 8 hours you're only going to wait say 3 hours. So so this thing really becomes a lot more useful because you don't have to charge it overnight. And even if you don't get to charge this thing up to 100%, let's say you just charge it for 30 minutes, that's still going to put so much power into this which you can then use when you're on the go. So this is really the best power bank I've had and I found it so useful since I've got this. So what's the next big thing about this? Well inside you'll find genuine LG 18650 battery cells. Not only are they a good brand but they're the high voltage ones, 4.35 volts which is the newer kind. So when you're charging it, it doesn't have to drop the voltage as much and when it's outputting it doesn't have to bump the voltage or boost the voltage as much. So they're really much more suitable for this kind of power bank arrangement. And I'm going to see if I can open this up and show you. Um, they have actually sent me pictures of what's inside this so I could show you those but I'd really like to see if I can open this up and show you for myself. So I couldn't get it open and I have actually done a little bit of damage there so I don't really want to go any further because this is my favourite power bank and I don't want to damage it so I'll just cut the pictures in now so you can see instead. So enough talk about the power bank, let's actually have a look and try and charge this and show you the quick charge technology. Now of course one thing to remember is that if your phone supports quick charge you have no problem, just plug in the USB power and it's fine. But if you want to quick charge this power bank itself, you will need a charger that supports quick charge. Now I have two on hand here. Now I have this one made by Anchor, which actually supports up to Quick Charge 3.0. Now not many devices are actually using Qualcomm 3.0 at the moment, but I figured it would be good to have an adapter that does support that, so in the future I'm ready. And this is backwards compatible with 2.0 and 1.0, so that should work fine. And then I also have this charger by Orki. This is a multi-port charger. Now only one of them supports Qualcomm 2.0, which is this orange one here. So we're going to test with both of these chargers and see how well they work. Now another thing to mention is that Voxlink provide two USB cables, both are micro USB and I haven't found much difference with them although I did find this one charged it a bit quicker. It's probably a much bigger cable just based on the diameter of the cable whereas this one is much longer um, but I do believe they're both 2.0 Qualcomm compatible so we're going to test both cables as well. Now we're going to start with the anchor charger and I'm going to plug my USB watt meter into that so that we can measure how much power is being consumed by the power power bank. Now I'll lay this down so that I can actually fit it in the shot and I'm going to start off with this thick cable that Voxlink have provided. I'll plug that into the watt meter and then into the power bank. <coughs> and now I'll zoom in on the watt meter so you can see what's going on. So you can see we're at 5.1 volts, around 2.75 amp and that adds up to around 14 watts. 
Now that's pretty incredible to charge the power bank at 14 watts. Now you might be thinking, okay, but that's still five volts. You said that Qualcomm uses higher voltages. Well, the thing is that the two devices actually have to come to an agreement, some kind of negotiation. So basically the charger talks to the power bank and they come up with a plan for what's the best way to charge me. Should you charge me at say nine volts or 12 volts or five volts? And how much should the current be? And there are a number of factors that can affect what it actually chooses to do. And that could even be little things like the heat of this charger or the heat of the power bank. So there's a lot involved for the charging rate, but either way, 14 watts is still an incredible charge rate. So let's swap this short cable for the other cable that they've provided. I'll plug this into the power bank and then I'll zoom in on the watt meter. So there you go, you can see that we're just under 5 volts, 2.4 amp around 12.3 watts so we're actually getting a little less power through this cable which isn't too surprising because it is a much longer cable and it appears to be thinner compared to this one which is shorter and fatter so this one can probably carry a little bit more power although there's not a huge difference between them so that was the anchor charger let's swap to the orky one and see how that does so i start by plugging my watt meter into the quick charge port on my charger and then I'll use the short cable first and we'll see how much power we get. So I'll plug this into the power bank and then zoom in on the watt meter. So you can see we're at around, it was at five volts and it jumped up to around nine volts. So we're at nine volts, two amp, 18 watts. So my Orky charger here is actually charging at a much higher rate. Well, not much higher, but we're from 14 watts to 18 watts, which is pretty much the maximum. So that is really charging this thing super fast. Let's swap the white cable for the longer cable that they provide and see how that does. So I'll plug it into my watt meter, then into the power bank, and then zoom in on the watt meter. So you can see we're at five volts, 2.2 amp, 11 watts. Now I'm going to give it a minute just to see if it does increase up to 9 volts again like it did a minute ago. Okay, so I've actually jumped ahead in the video and a minute passed and nothing's changed. It's still sitting around 5 volts. So for sure that little white cable does seem much better for charging the power bank. It transfers a lot more power. And for anyone who's curious, here's a micro USB cable, just a random one. This is made by FLIR for a thermal camera and we'll see how that does. I'll plug that into the power bank and zoom in on the watt meter. Okay, look at that. Pretty much it went from 5 volts straight up to 9 volts and transferring at 18 watts. So it doesn't have to be a special cable, it just has to be a good quality cable. And I've been so surprised by this FLIR cable because everything I've thrown at it, it's pretty much been the highest wattage for charging things. So, and this is a pretty thin cable, but somehow it manages. Now, let's say that you don't have a quick charge port on your charger, you just have a regular USB port. Well, let's see what we'll get from that. So you can see we're charging at around five volts, 1.6 amp, around eight watts. So that's pretty much standard for a power bank. Um, a lot of power banks can actually do two amp charging at five volts, so nothing really special, pretty much average on regular USB. But when you connect it to the Qualcomm Quick Charge, that's where it absolutely flies. And that's why you can recharge such a big battery bank in just a few hours because of that quick charge technology that lets you charge much faster. And the thing is, it's not just about pumping as much power in as possible. It's also about the long run because a lot of power banks can do say two amp or 1.5 amp to start with, but then they ramp down like when they get to say 30% and then 40% and they start charging slower and slower and slower. Whereas with the quick charge, it really maximizes it over the whole period so that you can really charge your power bank as fast as possible. Now, one of the other big differences I've noticed between the Voxlink and the other power banks I've had, for instance, Anchor or Asus, I've had you know so many power banks, I've got quite a lot of experience. This one, I can kind of plug stuff in, charge for a little while, unplug, plug in, plug out, plug in, plug out. And even at the end of the day, it still seems to be like maybe one dot is gone when I've charged a bunch of devices. Whereas with this one and other ones I have, if I do, you know, say, charging for 30 minutes, then unplug, then come back and do another 30 minutes and unplug. It seems to run down much quicker than if I say have a constant load on it the whole day. Whereas this one, I can add devices, take them, add them, take them, and it just seems to last forever. So I don't know exactly how they're doing it, but something about this 
really just works so well. And for anyone interested, I'm gonna use my USB dummy load to measure the true capacity of this. Basically, I'm gonna fully charge the Voxlink power bank and I'm gonna run my dummy load at one amp run it down and see how much power we actually manage to draw over a number of hours. But that's actually gonna take a while. One, I have to charge this, and two, it's gonna take a number of hours to run it down with this. So I'm gonna upload that as a separate video. So that's the Voxlink 9000 milliamp hour Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 power bank. I'm gonna put some links down below where you can find this on Amazon, for example. So if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.